Hello Year 12. Welcome to your second lesson on carbonyl chemistry. By now you should be really comfortable with the oxidation of carbonyls to form carboxylic acids and the oxidation of alcohols to form carbonyls. So we're looking at the reverse today, reduction, and we're looking at nucleophilic addition. So these are the spec points we're covering. We're going to be able to describe the reduction of carbonyl compounds with NaBH4, which uh, we normally call sodium borohydride. And we're going to outline the mechanism for this process. It's one of the two big mechanisms you need to know for A2 chemistry, so let's make sure we learn it well. Okay. Reduction. Aldehydes and ketones both feature carbon doubly bonded to oxygen. This is generally the negative one state, um, with carboxylic acids having being in the negative two state. So there is some variation on this. And these can all be react reduced using reducing agents. Okay. The most common reducing agent we're going to use is sodium borohydride. It's a hydride source. We're going to be talking about what that actually means a little bit later. We represent reduction as H in a square bracket. This is a lot like the oxidation symbol we had from last time. And if you remember, oxidation in organic chemistry is either the addition of oxygen or the removal of hydrogens. And reduction is the reverse. You either lose oxygen or you add hydrogens. Okay, now you may be asked to balance the reduction with sodium borohydride or you might just be asked to write the equation. Either way, this is really relevant. This is the equation for the reduction of ethanol to ethanol. But the trouble is, let's count the hydrogens. We have one hydrogen over here attached to this carbon. Over here we have two, carbons, two hydrogens and one attached to this oxygen. So we've managed to go from one so we've added two hydrogens. That means we need to balance it out by putting a two in front of our reducing symbol, like so. So the general formula for this balance reduction is always going to have a two there because you're always adding two hydrogens to that carbon. So you get to take your aldehyde to your ketone, you add two hydrogens, and you make an alcohol. Aldehydes will obviously be reduced to primary alcohols, and ketones will be reduced to secondary alcohols. That's the reduction of propanone to propan 2 ol Now, the big school of reactions that carbonyls do are nucleophilic substitution, uh, addition reactions. You've got a carbon attached to an oxygen, doubly bonded. That means it's unsaturated, so it can do ad addition reactions. The carbon has a lot of its electrons pulled away from it by oxygen which is very electronegative and that means if we take a nucleophile which is an electron pair donor that will attack the carbon. In this reaction we use NaBH4 and we use that to provide the hydride ion. We don't really talk about the BH4 or the, or the sodium we just think of it as a source of the hydride ion which is H- and that's a really powerful nucleophile. So that can add into the C double bond O. So the reduction reaction we've just been talking about is actually also a nucleophilic addition. We've gone from unsaturated here to saturated. So how does that look? What's the mechanism for that? Well, we start off with our, well, this is a ketone. And as you can see, the oxygen is pulling away the electrons. We've got a delta negative oxygen and we've got a delta positive carbon. Our H minus, our hydride ion, comes along and it attacks the carbon. You can see that the curly arrow comes from the negative charge and goes to the carbon. It's really important and that's the way it goes. The curly arrows show the movement of electrons from high electron density, so like the negative charge or a lone pair, to where there's low electron density. So that's the first step. There's a three step mechanism. Second step, we've now our carbon is now saturated, it's got four bonds to it, and we've got a negative charge on our oxygen. So what's going to happen? Well, some water is going to come along, obviously normally the bonds don't spin, and the oxygen is going to take this hydrogen off the water. Final step, we've now got our alcohol, in this case a secondary alcohol, but we've also got a hydroxide ion. Now. You might think, why hasn't this been showing up in our reduction equation? We don't even have a second product. And that's because the hydroxide joins up with the sodium to make sodium hydroxide, and we also have BH3, or uh, borazine. 
knocking around at the end of this reaction. So those things we don't tend to include. We're only really interested in the actual reduction. Okay. So reduction of ketones and aldehydes, all of them can be represented by this mechanism. It's the same for every single one. All you do is replace the R1 and R2 groups with whatever groups you've got on the molecule. So let's say we've got uh, propanone, you'd replace R1 with CH3 and R2 with CH3. Let's say we had ethanol, you'd replace R1 with hydrogen and R2 with CH3. So why don't you have a go at doing, these, uh, doing the mechanism for these carbonyls? This one I've given you the full reaction for. This one I've just given you the structural formula. And this one I've only given you the name. So have a little pop of those and we'll go through it in our lesson on Friday.